Today's case study analyzes the impact of vampire country singer Vlad Ash. This is Paperless Pulp. Testing, testing, what? You know, I don't actually know what that does. <laughs> I could say testing all day, but I don't actually know how this thing works. See, this is exactly why I went into neuroscience instead of microphone science school. Because I'm looking at this thing, and I have no idea if it's actually working. It just, it sits there. But when I'm thinking about my brain, I can, I can feel it working inside my head. So, like, I can just go... And then I, I obviously I can tell what's happening in the brain and I am sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, I was moving the phalanges of my left hand from proximal to distal joint in a wave-like motion, indicating that there was no ataxia, and then making the sound with my mouth, uh, the bleed uh, you heard it, which lets me know that cranial nerve five is intact. So Again, welcome. Uh, I think I already said my name is Dr. Namserp. <laughs> but for those of you who aren't great listeners, there it is again, I think. And this will be a case study on the brain. Now, I know that normally case studies are written down, but, uh, but you know, who makes those rules, right? <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? Who decides that everything has to be written down and that the written word is the most legitimate form of the recorded word? You know what? I'll tell you who. It's the scientific community. And let me tell you something about the scientific community. If if I was a baseball player and I had one bad game, people would go, ah, bad game. But usually, great player. But you have one experiment where everybody gets exploding head syndrome, which is not as bad as the name would have you believe. And all of a sudden, you're banned from submitting to legitimate publications and, and fired from the top secret brain lab that you're with. And, and your name and your reputation, your legacy are, are shunt. So anyway, we're doing this here. Also, because in my recent experiment, I lost the use of my thumbs. It's just I... I find it difficult to write things down. But mostly, it's that I don't think that the scientific community should be able to monopolize scientific discoveries. I mean, listen, it became clear that I could not make my mark on the world through their outlets. So instead, I reach out to you, the non-scientific community. I'm so sorry, that sounds mean. Uh, what do you call yourselves these days? Uh, lay people? Commoners? Yeah, that seems right. I reach out to you, the commoners, to share my knowledge of the brain in this legitimate episodic format, which I will produce and release weekly until I'm inspired to dive into my next world-altering experiment. Fingers crossed. So here's how this is going to work. I've come into possession of a hard drive with recorded cases from the top secret brain research lab that I was coincidentally fired from last week. I'm going to pick a case at random. We will listen to it together. And then, using my sharpened skills of science and deduction, I'm going to react to the case from a neuroscience perspective. So, yes. Without further ado, here's the case. <laughs> It says here you call yourself a poet? A poet? <laughs> no, sir. I don't know who wrote that. I just play Creature Country. We all knew Under Your Skin would bring Creature Country to the big stage. The Creature Country is one of the truest and most sincere forms of American folk music. It's the latest subversive craze to sweep the nation's youth. It was the best of times. 
It was the worst of times. Vampires and werewolves at war. The underworld syndicates tear themselves to shreds over turf. Tragedy in Ticktown this morning, as the scrapes bleed into a second brutal day. We're sorry to have to report that creature country musician, Vlad Ash, is dead. A casualty of the ongoing Ticktown scrapes. I wish I could tell him what that song would become. Hurts to hear it. But you know, I still listen to it. It's the best song it's the I best ever song made. I ever made. Welcome to Seeds and Stems, a show about music, inspiration, and execution. I'm Melie Jody. Seeds and Stems is sponsored by Thor VPN. Harness the power of the old one to protect your data. Thor VPN uses an advanced system of runic encryption to ensure you're browsing your favorite websites anonymously and at lightning fast speeds. Thor VPN is officially endorsed by the God of Thunder. Try it free for 30 days with the promotional code Idrisil. Let's get our hands in the dirt. Vlad Ash, under your skin. The accolades speak volumes. Released May 15th, 1957 on Ghost Note Recordings, Under Your Skin topped the charts and camped out on the top 100 for a whopping 1,016 weeks. That's almost 20 years. The record continues to sell to this day. You've heard it in movies and TV shows, I'm sure. Take 1991's A Gargoyle and a Gentleman. Oh, darling. Do you really think you'd be able to love a, a human like me? My heart isn't made of stone, Michelle. You're just going to perch there. Lie down and give me a kiss. To the critically acclaimed prestige drama, The Nosferatu's. Okay, here's what you're gonna do. The Count, take him to the blood bank, and then you make sure he doesn't come back. Duh. Ah, sure thing, Bonnie. There, he's right there. <laughs> yeah. You Even a controversial stint as a campaign music for 1998 Plasma Party presidential candidate and noted war criminal Mosquito Henry. <laughs> The song has been covered and remixed countless times by generation after generation of musicians. Hearthstone Brooks once said that everyone who buys a copy of Under Your Skin goes and starts their own creature country band. And he's not wrong. Today, the genre is cemented as a mainstay of the pop music landscape. Longtime listeners of Seeds and Stems know my format. I bring on the band, they tell you the story behind the song you know. But today's a bit different. Lorenzo Vasili Rosu was known to the public as Vlad Ash. His life was cut short on June 20th, 1957, at the age of 27. On the day you're listening to this, Vlad would have been 90 years old relatively young by vampire standards. So, we're doing something special. Join me through archival footage and interviews with those who knew him best as we unearth the seeds and stems behind flat ashes under your skin. (laughs) 
let's take a moment to meet one of Tick Town's aspiring teenage musicians, Vlad Asp. Ash. Sorry? Vlad. Ash. Vlad strummed through life something special. Manny Ghost Hands, legendary spectral apparition, session drummer, and the founder of Ghost Note Recordings. Got it from his mama, Maria. The original drummer with the terrors back in the 30s. Ooh, the way she hit that pocket. Me and Millie first met Vlad during the Married to the Mob sessions. Hit it, boys! Maria brought Vlad to gigs, and we just adored him. Lady familiar, Millie to fans and friends, the undisputed queen of creature country, lead singer of the Ticktown Tears, and 23-time Scummy Award-winning producer for Ghost Note Recordings. Just so cute. Always falling all over the place, bumping into things. So fragile. Always a little weak, what with that dietary restriction. Dietary restriction? Honey, he had this aversion to blood, like an allergy. Or at least he said he did. <laughs> Take Laurentiu's word with a grain of rice. <laughs> Any which way, he never touched the stuff, as a kid. If you've been living under a tombstone for the last 200 years, a quick sidebar on modern vampire biology. Contrary to the once popular belief, modern vampires don't need blood to survive. However, studies have shown that a semi-regular serving of consensual, fresh plasma keeps a vampire strong and regular. Hmm, he wasn't regular. Spent most days being backstage by himself, writing, singing songs he'd made up. We knew that little sucker was meant for music. And loneliness. You know, a boy like him maybe should have been hanging around kids his age. Not a bunch of grown-ass musicians. Lorenzo didn't graduate, marry his high school sweetheart, or join the army. Instead, in the dingy back rooms of Ticktown's creature clubs, he became Vlad Ash. As a teenager, Vlad made guest appearances with Lady Familiar's terrors at their residency in the infamous Freakeasy Daemonology. He even played a few of his own songs. <laughs> They weren't very good. <laughs> I think there was one about a unicorn losing her horn that went on for near 12 minutes. Oh, he loved a tough crowd. Working the Ticktown circuit in the 40s wasn't an easy gig. See, back then, most of the clubs were underworld clubs. You know, mob controlled. Werewolf and vampire spots. And the Fang Lords and the Dog Fathers were real traditional old world types. Bad blood between them going back a long time. So werewolves didn't play the vampire spots and vampires didn't play the werewolf spots. But damned if Vlad didn't try. <laughs> I remember Vlad dragging his banged up guitar to those werewolf clubs all by his lonesome. Just boiling over with determination to play his music to whoever'd listen. Oh, he didn't care. He'd gig wherever he could. Here's Vlad doing an interview in 1949. He's 19. Welcome back to Super Murgatroyd on WHSS. 
let's take a moment to meet one of Tick Town's aspiring teenage musicians, Vlad Asp. Ash. Sorry? Vlad. Ash. Oh. Even as a teenager, s- there's that see? signature uh, deep timbre, the world-weary station, cadence, yes? an old soul and a young vampire's yes, body. But I feel as though even snakes can but enjoy the But listening to this recording, I'm surprised well, at how awkward we'll young Vlad is. See. He hasn't quite developed his mysterious persona yet, yes. and it shows. Yes. Uh, says here you call yourself a poet? Poet? Oh, sir, I, I don't know who wrote that. I just play Creature Country. Creature Country, you call it? Well, isn't that something? And you're going to sing us one of your Creature Country's songs, is that right? That's right, sir. What's it about then? Well, I'm a vampire, you see, but I don't much care for blood. Shut the front door! Yes, sir. Never touch the stuff. Reckon I never will, so I've gone and written a song about it. I call this one, Medusa, I Won't Be Slithering Underneath Your Stone Skin. Medusa. Spiderweb cracks in the mirror. Statues that won't shed a tear. Without seeing a peer Caught in the salty veneer (laughs) Where'd you find this? (laughs) Yeah, this is it though Under your skin The first incarnation All the lyrics changed, but you know The guts of it is still there Hell Hell, it turned into the complete opposite of this. Gotta start somewhere, though. We call that a seed. (sighs) Vlad played Medusa for us one night. Hated the name. But the tune was catchy. Mm. (laughs) That boy did not like blood. Vlad would shelve Medusa I Won't Be Slithering Underneath Your Stone Skin for a few years and focus on creature covers and pop standards. Over time, his live shows became the talk of Ticktown. A small following of devoted fans grew around him. They called him the Pale Troubadour, the Troubled Count, Hosferatu. In 1955, Vlad is God gets spray painted on the Old Avenue Bridge and it stays up there for two days. Long enough for someone to snap the now famous photograph that graces the back cover of Vlad's posthumous live album, What's at Stake? Apparently, he hated that picture. Speaking of albums, In late 1956, at the age of 26, Vlad Ash officially signed to Ghost Note Recordings, Tick Town's premier creature music label. You know, working with him in an official capacity, so to speak, that's when I really got to know the kind of vampire he was. I'd seen him around before then, always sulking by himself at shows, but... We'd never really jammed, one-on-one, to see the work ethic. He came in with three albums worth of songs that first day. About two hours in, and he had us working our asses off. He got some folk in one room, laying down a groove, and he's bouncing between that and another room, riding with the horn section. And then he's by himself in the booth, scrawling and scratching out songs left and right. That sounds intense. You bet. I'll never forget it. And so one day, he comes in, 
and he says, drop everything. From now on, we're working on this one. And he played us a song. It was Medusa's slithering cosmic skin or whatever, but it was completely revamped. (laughs) The lyrics had changed dramatically. Check out this rehearsal recording from the early days of the Under Your Skin album session. (laughs) Back one more time. Shit, almost broke a string that time. Break ten strings, Husky. Quit playing like they're made out of silver. (laughs) That voice? That's Derek Husky Growlburn. Session fiddle for ghost note recordings. Let's talk a bit about Husky. Husky is a relatively low-key figure in the early days of creature country music, but his story and ours intersect in beautiful and tragic ways. Here's a bootleg of him playing Requiem for a Full Moon, a traditional werewolf tune. That's right. Derek Grauburn is a werewolf. As best we know, Husky made his way to Ticktown in the mid-1950s. He was a drifter and a self-taught musician. In Ticktown, he worked as an enforcer for the werewolf underworld for a few months. But a dispute over kindness led to his expulsion from the mob. Husky busts the Ticktown streets, broke and homeless for a few months before finally winding up at Ghost Note Recordings. Manny Ghost Hands found him outside the studio one morning, playing his fiddle with the desperation of a drowning virtuoso. What could I do but take him in? He played beautifully. Like no one I'd ever heard before. Werewolf or otherwise. At Ghost Note, Husky found a new home and a family. By day, he worked as a custodian, and by night, he laid down violin tracks for some of the most influential musicians of the time. He never recorded any solo studio material or gained any amount of fame, but on Under Your Skin, he would play arguably the most iconic fiddle of our time. It's Ticktown, winter of 56. Outside the studio walls, vampire werewolf tensions are flaring towards a violent crescendo. But in Ghost Note Studios, a vampire and a werewolf are about to write a masterpiece. Here's the tape. The only thing Silver hears is your tongue, Vlad. <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> My tongue? Well, you'd better hope so. Or else, I'm just here wasting all of y'all's precious time on the company dime. <laughs> okay then, Ghost, let's boogie woogie. Been waiting all day. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Holy guacamole, I'll be drinking your blood. If you let the right one in Something in the water got me out of the mud Now I want to go for a swim The lyrics aren't quite the ones we heard on that old radio interview. That sprout had a coldness, a distance to it, like through a concrete wall. This sapling, though, is brimming with life, vibrant and warm. It's raw. And emotional. And yes, that's Vlad singing about drinking blood. Something got Vlad Ash here to this pivotal point in our journey. What changed? Join me after the break as we examine Vlad's journals and dig deeper into the seeds and stems of Under Your Skin. This episode of Seeds and Stems is brought to you by Cauldron. The latest app from Scourge. Cauldron is a subscription-based streaming spell service that puts over 12,000 curses and enchantments at your fingertips. When I'm at home and I need to bewitch a piece of furniture or conjure a cosmic void, 
I use Cauldron. Gone are the days of poring over tomes to find that one spell you need. Cauldron makes it easy for you to search, select, and cast high-level magic within minutes. Sign up for Cauldron today and receive five free evil eyes by using the code Seeds and Stems. Cauldron. More boil and bubble, less toil and trouble. Welcome back. Let's take a trip to the museum. Mm, see this? This marking here? That's June to December, 1956. Now, his penmanship is horrible, but pay attention, you can learn so much from it. Dr. Sphinx is the director of the Featured Creatures Museum and the foremost expert on all things Vlad Ash. You want to know something interesting? Here is where you look. November 1956. Prior to this month, the Medusa lyrics. It's all hot, nothing new to report, see? But then here... November 12th, a draft, Medusa, scratched out. Look at the lyrics. Holy guacamole, what a hell of a drug. There it is. The next day, more drafts, more recognizable lyrics. I'm gonna go for a swim, you're bleeding me thin. And here, I just want what's under your skin. It's even circled, manically, as if uh, written in lightning, or more fittingly, blood. What happened in November? Well, Vlad, you know, he was at Ghost Note Day in and out, and... And? And he met Husky. And they fell in love. No riddle there. I say I love you, but you know what I mean. Between late 1956 and his death in June of 57, Husky and Vlad were inseparable, and the music thrived for it. Listen to Husky's solo here. This solo is immortalized on record a month later, note for note. It's precise and loaded with emotion. It's a poem, not a solo, a sonnet for violin. Ghost Hands says the day they recorded the final take of Under Your Skin, it felt like magic being realized, like two kindred spirits dancing the duet they were born to dance. Listen to it. This is a relief. This is a declaration of love. This is smoldering hot blood. The stems begin to branch out and intertwine. In early 1957, Vlad Ash goes back on WHSS to debut a demo of Under Your Skin. W-H-S-S. It's midnight somewhere. Welcome back to Venom Sack on WHSS. We are here with Vlad Ash, local ghoul made good, to talk to us about his rockin' new song. Vlad, baby, you are looking great. You on a new diet? How's it going? (laughs) Howdy, yeah. Uh, Thank you. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, You know, because of this number we're putting out on Ghost Note, we're all feeling something good about it. It's going to be called uh, Under Your Skin. Guacamole, you're a glutton for love. Will you let the right This one demo's in? still a little way from being the song you and I know, but check this out. I just want what's under you. Daddy, oh, better grab those smits. Because you've got a hot hit on your hands. Appreciate it. It finally got there, I think. That 
violin. It tied it all together. <laughs> there. That inconspicuous little laugh. You can hear the smile in his voice. At least I can. The violin ties it all together. I get it, Vlad. And here, our story reaches its tragic and untimely end. If we are to talk about Vlad Ash, we must talk about June 20th, 1957, a month after Under Your Skin is released. The song is barreling up the charts, and in a parallel but all too real universe, Tick Town is crumbling under the weight of the scrapes. No one expected the song to hit like it did, least of all Vlad. It blew up so quick. We all got whiplash. <laughs> but we weren't really much for celebration at the time. Too much pain. Too much death. In the last entry of his journal, Vlad writes two worlds, unbridled joy and unspeakable destruction. I had lunch with them at midnight. Vlad and Husky. They told me they were going to the studio to work on the next song. Silver Bullet. I told them not to. I should be in the studio right now, he said. I don't know where else I want to be. He was glowing like a fireplace. Healthy regular looking. I'd never seen him so happy. And I never saw him again. In the streets of Tick Town, rival underworld factions clash in open warfare. There's blood, fur, and rubble everywhere. Vampires and werewolves at war. Around 1 a.m., Vlad and Husky make it to Ghost Note. They barricade the doors, hoping to weather out the violence from the safety of their adopted home. About half an hour later, a scuffle breaks out near the studio. Something catches fire. Within minutes, the entire block erupts in flames. The old oak walls of the studio burn with nightmarish speed. The building crumbles. There is no escape. At dawn, the fighting finally ends. As a morning sun beats down on Tick Town, Concerned residents search the rubble for survivors. In the early afternoon, Husky is pulled from the wreckage of Ghost Note recordings, injured but alive. Vlad's body is never recovered. Such a goddamn tragedy. When I heard, I nearly died myself. I still miss him so much. At least they found each other, for the little time they had. We can be glad for that, right? Husky has never spoken publicly about what happened that night. Shortly after Vlad's death, he retired from the music industry and moved to the outskirts of Tick Town, where he's maintained a quiet, solitary life away from fans, friends, and reporters. I'll admit... In preparing this episode, I reached out to Husky for an interview. He politely declined, but offered to share these words. I'm glad hearing a new generation's gonna meet the Vlad I knew. He would've loved that. Vlad always did like sharing his soul, even the messy bits. Myself, not so much. My time with Vlad, I remember 
every moment. But I'm of the mind that some things you gotta keep close to the chest for yourself. Maybe I'm just an old dog, but it's the only way I know. I was never much good at speaking on things anyways. It's why I play the fiddle. <laughs> We know very little about what happened on June 20th, 1957, and Husky's decision not to relive it, while understandable, has led to no shortage of speculation. There's, uh, not a small faction of fans, fanatics some would say, who call themselves the Ash Catchers. Now they firmly believe that Vlad faked his death and is uh, relaxing on a slope in Norway somewhere. The greater fan community is more grounded. We celebrate what little we have of his work and his words. And there's so little. Uh, But I guess, you know, we're just suckers for pain. Vlad's death shocked the world and spurred the community to action. After months of violence, the Tick Town scrapes came to an end. Once the dust had settled, the powers that be got together to sign the Vampire Werewolf Peace Accords, which have held for over 50 years. After it was signed, a 40-piece marching band played, you guessed it, Under Your Skin. And the rest, as they say, is on the record. For Seeds and Stems, I'm Melie Jody. And now, in full bloom, Vlad Ashes, Under Your Skin. Holy guacamole, you're a glutton for love. Will you let the right one in? Oh, and that water must be riddled with blood. I think I want to go for a swim. I guess you know I'm a sucker for pain. I've got a hunger and you'll bleed me thin. I say I love you, but you know what I mean. I just want what's under you. Mississippi mud Wear your crucifix When we're making love Kissing on your neck I'm not trying to leave a mark Others have come closer I can feel them in the dark I guess you know I'm a sucker for pain I've got a hunger
All right, so let's get into it. Neuroscientist reacts. Case study, go. So, uh, neurologically in the brain, when someone listens to music. When, when I was doing my residency, I worked with this elderly population that was, uh, it was an Alzheimer's place, memory care facility. And I would always see that these people, they couldn't remember their kids, they couldn't always remember their own names, but they could remember every word to by mere Bister Shane or my Yiddish mama. It was a Jewish nursing home. And it's almost like the music took their memory cells and made those cells immortal. <laughs> like they stopped deteriorating when there was music present. Like if you could synthesize that power and insert it into all the human cells, then you could make a person immortal. I mean, you could though. <laughs> you could make a person immortal from that. Like, you could actually, this is achievable. So mad if I figured out how to do it. They'd stop letting Jeff write all the textbook chapters and the scientific textbooks. God, he can barely put a sentence together. <laughs> I promise we will be back next week and we will have another case study that I dissect and analyze in glorious detail, but I, 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 can't, I can't. When the creative mind is working like this, I can't just continue recording and uh, talking to you people. What do you want from me? And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. And I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go do some experiments, and I will let you know what I find. Uh, goodbye.